Well, it is uh, the most important institution in the cancer field. It ranks as the number one cancer hospital in the United States for good reason. It has a critical mass of talent and capabilities that allows us to really make very important uh, progress in this war on cancer. We're finally at a point now where we have this uh, confluence of technology and a level of understanding that, allowed us, that allows us now to think for the first time of making a decisive assault on this dreaded disease, you know, to dethrone this emperor of maladies. And what I want to do at MD Anderson is to harness its full potential, its critical mass, of talent across all levels of the organization from basic to translational and clinical and organize those efforts in a way that allows us to take this treasure trove of information in the Genome Project, systematically move it through to identify the critical genetic elements that are in a specific cancer, design therapies that would allow us to attenuate the activity of those genetic alterations to not just have patients respond, but have them be cured of the disease. I think that it's hard to predict. I think it's going to take some time because, uh, you know, it, there's a lot of information that we need to secure, even in today's technology. So it's going to take years, if not a couple of decades. But I think that the progress is going to be staggering over the next uh, couple of decades, and we're going to be able to think about durable responses to treatment, rendering treatments that are very safe and effective, and so on. There's another aspect of this which often goes unspoken, which is a very happy problem that we have, which is that we have an increasing number of survivors. Many patients are surviving their encounter with cancer. So we actually have to think about not just curing cancer, but rendering safe care as well. Well, many positive things. Obviously, there's a lot of uninsured Americans. Uh, we need to bend uh, the trajectory of the health care burden uh, in society overall at every level. Uh, there are many good things that are coming out as a result of this. The fact that we're going to bring more individuals into the system, coverage for things like prevention, uh, for, for routine care and, and, and cancer clinical trials. Many aspects of this is the right thing to do, very beneficial for society. The challenges that we face at an institution like MD Anderson is that as patients come into the system, uh, the uh, kinds of reimbursement that we get for services rendered is not fully recovered. And so there's an enormous amount of economic pressure that we and all uh, academic medical centers are going to be under. Now, the way that we're addressing that in part is to very aggressively and proactively enhance the quality of care while reducing the cost of that care. And in fact, we have a new institute that we've developed for cancer care excellence, which is taking on the science of evaluating how is it that we render care, what is the evidence that a particular type of care is the most effective means of, of uh, handling a disease, uh, and what are the economics behind that. These are things that have not been measured previously, because uh, it's been about the patient and the physician. There hasn't been that level of analysis to say that these are exactly the sorts of things you should do, and if you have a list of options, what's the most economic one what path to take? All academic medical centers are under significant uh, pressure, economic pressures, at all levels. You know, you have decreasing pay lines from federal grants. Uh, you have uh, the challenges of, of uh, managed care, uh, the uh, Affordable uh, Care Act as, as well, which are providing economic pressures on all academic medical centers because uh, those are relatively unfunded relative to other types of um, um, uh, activities in, in the healthcare system. So all, and, and then you have, uh, you know, the declining uh, budgets as you've, you know, all these state budgets are under tremendous pressure, et cetera. So you've got this confluence of headwinds that are really presenting challenges. So uh, at MD Anderson, we're very fortunate in that we have an extraordinarily competitive and talented uh, staff. 
that are able to compete uh, for these grants. We have some that we are the largest grant recipient uh, from the NCI in the United States. Uh, so we have an extremely strong base and we have very good mentorship and we have very good programs that will further enable them to remain competitive. One of the brilliant things that Texas has done, which has put, in, uh, put us into a, an amazingly competitive situation across the country, is the SEPA funding. This has been a tremendous shot in the arm for Texas in general, and it's great for cancer. Uh, this has had enormous impact. I can tell you that, you know, 12 days into my presidency, this has enabled us to secure uh, very good inroads to recruiting a star faculty, retaining our most talented individuals, not just at MD Anderson, but across the state. One has to recognize that the only real solution to the major problems that face us economically, sociologically, and politically uh, is science. There's just no doubt about it. By the year 2025, we're going to have 1.2 billion individuals over the age of 60 worldwide. It's practically the size of the nation of China. If you look at the incidence of the great diseases beyond the age of 60, cancer, Alzheimer's, heart disease, diabetes, there is an exponential increase in the incidence of these diseases. They practically double every five years after the age of 60. So you have these changing demographics. When I was born in 1955, the life expectancy in China was 42, today it's 74. So the world is careening towards an unsustainable situation with respect to the burden that these great diseases are going to extract. So the only answer to that is to do research. And our academic medical centers have, been, have led the world in this. We have no peer in science in the United States. If one could point to one thing that no one can, can touch us with in terms of competitive advantage, job creation, the science that in fact fuels the information in our textbooks for us to teach our students, the United States of America and this great state of Texas has an extraordinary uh, set of achievements to be very proud of.